This is the second part of a two-part video series um, showing you how I made a cyclone for dust collection out of sheet metal. In the first video, if you watched it, we made the lower part of the cyclone out of sheet metal. Um, the second part of the video here, we're making the upper chamber of the dust collection cyclone out of polycarbonate to give it a transparent look so you can watch it in action as it's swirling around um, doing its business separating the dust. So come on mm -hmm. along and watch the second part. So in the second video here of the sheet metal cyclone, we're making the upper part of the, the cyclone, uh, the baffle. Um, I'm going to lay out the top, the very, very top of the cyclone um, out of metal, out of sheet metal again. Just going to cut a circle, uh, draw out a circle, cut it out, kind of like a pie shape. And bend the tabs uh, down so it can sit on top of the cyclone. If you look carefully, you notice I actually drew two circles on the sheet metal. One is my cut line. The other one lets me know where to actually bend the metal down uh, for the tabs. So it'll sit nice and flush on top of the upper chamber of the cyclone. This gives you an idea of the circle I just cut out, where it's going to sit in relation to the cyclone. Next I laid out the markings where I want to cut my polycarbonate. This is the part that um, sits in the very, very top. It's going to be transparent so you can look through like a window and see the cyclone in action. Now it's time to cut the polycarbonate out on the bandsaw. After I cut the polycarbonate pieces, I went ahead and cut some strips of aluminum and I pop riveted the two polycarbonate pieces together. That way we can uh, make a circle out of it and connect it. Next I cut a piece of metal pipe out at a taper so that when it mounts to the side of the polycarbonate it'll be nice and flush and uh, it'll make a nice uh, transition of the air coming in to the upper baffle and start spinning around. I was originally going to encase it in some wood. I see that a lot of people doing that. Um, I decided not to. Um, I decided to abandon the um, closing it in wood and just straight have the pipe going right through the polycarbonate. Next I attached a one inch strip of aluminum to the top of the cyclone. Essentially it's going to be helping the transition of the polycarbonate transparent piece on the upper baffle to lower sheet metal cyclone itself. It'll help um, secure it together and kind of give it a more of a clean look. Then I attached the um, transparent upper baffle chamber to the lower part of the sheet metal cyclone. And it was very, very challenging actually attaching it. It didn't go as smooth as I anticipated, but when does anything ever go absolutely perfect? The next morning I finished cutting out the very top of the cyclone, the lid so to speak. Um, I'm starting with the center. This is actually the port that leads to the inline blower. Next I started cutting some tabs out on the very top piece. That way I could bend the tabs down and then this piece will fit very nicely on top.
Next, I added the internal pipe underneath the lid. It has to be recessed down um, about six inches. It's going to help uh, not bring in as much dust when it goes to the blower. I went ahead and snipped the back ends of the rivets off as flush as I could get. That way it's going to help with the airflow a little bit. I went ahead and caulked everything up. That way we can have a nice air seal to not allow any air to intake or escape. Now the transparent cyclone has been completed for my cyclone workbench, quote unquote. I went ahead and attached another one inch piece of aluminum strip at the top where the transparent baffle meets the lid just to give it a cleaner look. This two-part video series on how I made the Cyclone is only a part of the segment on my new all-in-one workbench. I call it the Cyclone Workbench since the Cyclone dust collection system is actually built into the workbench amongst all kinds of other really cool stuff. So follow along with me.